Hey, welcome everybody. We're so glad you have viewed in today and uh, Doc is with me as you can see. And uh, we're going to discuss, Doc, uh, questions for the host. This yes. was a last minute thing. I, I posted some things on Facebook and I got swarmed with questions. Yes. And uh, we, we, we couldn't do them all, but maybe we'll do another one of these sometimes. But I've got a, several questions here that yeah. we're going to try to deal with today. What I'm finding, Doc, is people got questions. Sure. And well, we say things and as a preacher, period, but particularly in prophecy, we, we say terms and, and, and names that it's very familiar to us, but it's not to everybody. Yeah. So, uh, so folks, uh, fasten in there. We're going to jump right into this because we got so much to get to. I want to get as many of these questions as I can, so we're just going to... Uh, not do any of the formalities we usually do and just let's just jump in this Don. let's start with that first one um, somebody somebody asked the question what is the difference between the tribulation period mm -hmm. and Daniel's 70th week why don't you do well there's that? not anything different uh, they're one and the same uh, because the tribulation is the is actually the last seven years of the 490 year prophecy out of Daniel chapter 9. Right. They're one and the same. Okay. And then really I guess more in a biblical sense it should be called Daniel's 70th week. Yeah. Yes. And of course the, the New Testament does talk about the tribulation. Yes. And the great tribulation which is the mm -hmm. second half. Yes. Because the tribulation in the New Testament is broken up into two two parts. Two halves. They're each uh, they're called 42 months each mm -hmm. or three and a half years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or 1260 days. 1260. And that tells us how to know how to count prophetic time. Yeah. As well. But and then the second half even out of the Old Testament tells us it's a time of Jacob's troubles. Yeah. It's going to be a severe time. Jacob yeah. meaning Israel. Israel. And yes. uh, yeah, because Israel's pretty much uh, at peace the first half. Right. They've made a because deal. Because they've made a false, they, they, they've gone along with the false covenant of the Antichrist. Yeah. Uh, the Bible makes it clear that they didn't sit at the table uh, honestly uh, at it. But anyway, uh, yes. Okay. All right, well, let's get into some more of these. These, uh, these are interesting. Um, Richard from New Hampshire asks, can you explain your illustration about the chess clock? So I brought my yeah. chess clock. And of course, <laughs> um, I used to play chess, and I use this in some of my, some of my um, meetings that I do and mm -hmm. proxy conferences. It, it's, I'm going to set it right there so you folks can see it there. This is a chess clock that you would use if you played chess in a tournament. And what you do is, let, let's say Doc is my partner here. I would make my move and then I would hit this button right here. This clock stops and Doc's clock would start ticking. This is exactly, Doc, how, how the Old Testament and the New Testament I, works. I believe you're right. The Old Testament, I think, ended you know, either at the cross or with the stoning of Stephen. Mm -hmm. That's another whole story here. But when the Old Testament ended, the clock stopped mm -hmm. and the church age clock began ticking. Mm -hmm. And we've been in that church age now for almost 2,000 years. Right. And uh, when the church age is over at the rapture, God will hit the button, stop the church age. Goes back to the Old Testament Goes back clock. to the missing seven year period yes. called Daniel's 70th week. Yes. And the, the tribulation period. And the amazing thing is the first 483 years was exactly to the day. Yeah. And the last seven is going to be exactly to the day. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so I hope that helps you. Um, who was that? That was Richard. I hope that's a help to you. The chess clock. It's just illustrating time, from Old Testament time and New Testament time. Let me say this also. There can be no overlapping of time. My clock cannot tick while his clock is ticking. When I hit that button, my clock stops. His clock doesn't even lose a second. Um, so if you're playing an hour-long game, each guy gets. Uh, yeah, you each know, guy's got the time. So the hour is going to be made up between them two clocks, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't. There's no overlapping there. You cannot be in the Old Testament and the New Testament at the same at time. At the same time. No. So when the rapture happens, the church is gone. The saints are gone. Well. Mm -hmm. To go with that, that's what I was getting ready to say. The 490 year prophecy was all about Israel, so there's no overlapping right. with the church and Israel. So the rapture of the saints is going to take place prior to the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel. 
All right, so let's, let's go with another one here. This is Joseph from Pennsylvania, and thanks for your question, Richard. Uh, I enjoyed sharing with you my clock here, my chess clock. Uh, Joseph up in Pennsylvania has a question about the Nephilim, and we'll get a lot of these. Mm -hmm. um, do you believe and does Scripture tell us how big the giants were? He says, I have a pastor who says some giants in the Bible were 30 feet tall, and he believes we will see them again soon. And Joseph adds at the bottom here, I am not believing in this. Yeah, you're right, Joseph, not to believe in it. And and your preacher is, he's just, he's just resonating what's been gathered through ages of time, inserted into, your Bible does not say any of those things. Uh, and even archaeological discoveries, and I'm involved with the Creation Evidences Museum. We've done archaeological work in many countries of the world. And uh, there's never been a 30-foot tall skeleton found. Now, Goliath is the only one that I can think of in the Bible mm -hmm. that he actually tells how tall he right. is. Right. And then the, the length of the bed, I believe it is uh, Og, the king Og, his bed was a long bed. Uh, these are about the only two that I would can yeah. think of. And none of them was none of them 30 was, feet. None of them was over 12 and a half, 13 feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Joseph, thank you for that. Hope we helped you with that question. But I, I think Joseph already had a handle on it. Yeah, I it. think he did. I think Joseph is frustrated with all the junk that's coming well, in. I am too. It's an accumulation down through the last couple of hundred years of church age. These ideas that have been accumulated and added into, it's not found in the Bible. Let's make sure the people, the viewers know the word Nephilim is not a King James Bible. It's no. not an English word, is it? It is, it is the Hebrew word translated giants and in the context properly translated giants. Right. Because it never was, and still to this day, it'll never have any connection with fallen angels. Right. No, period. absolutely none. No. I wrote a book, and she'll put it up for you, The, the Great End Time Distraction. Yes. You actually wrote a chapter for me in there as well. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I feel that that book settles the whole matter. It can 100%. be a great help to people. It's, it asks some questions that nobody's going to answer. Yeah. Because they're, you, they're not in the Bible. One chapter is called Four Irrefutable that's what Facts. I'm, that's the chapter. Yeah. I, I think the whole book ought to resolve around that yeah. because yeah. Th that is it. That settles the whole matter. Right it there. does. I mean, um, okay, let's, let's, let's go a little further here. Um, I don't want to spend much time on this, Doc, because this is not really <coughs> prophecy related, although we're going to twist it a little bit into that. Sharon asks, um, and I forget where Sharon's from, but Sharon asked this question. What is your biblical definition of marriage between a man and a woman? She's not asking about man and man. She's not asking that. She's asking. She's not confused about that. No, no. she's asking, what is the definition of marriage? Do you think you have to be married by a pastor or a judge before God considers you to be married? Right. Well, in biblical sense, marriage in God's eyes is at the moment of consummation. That's physical relationship. Right, that's what I believe. And, uh, and I do think that particularly in the age, of the church age in which we're living in, in Ephesians chapter 5, he talks about the husband and wife relationship. He talks about how the husband is to love the wife like Christ loved the church. And so the commitment that's made before God and the audience uh, conducted by uh, a preacher I believe is a physical showing of the spiritual relationship that we entered into with Christ. And to be to make sure we people understand this, the woman at the well had had four husbands, mm -hmm. but she was shacking up. Yeah, because Jesus said, "In the man you're now, living with." Now that's not a now. good term. Most of our preachers not going to use that. Yeah, I, I like that word. Yeah. Shacking well. Up. It, because it's a bold statement of the reality yeah. of what it is. In other words, you can practice the act of marriage, the consummation, yeah. without, without the being, commitment or the, the without covenant. Without the commitment in God's eyes, yes. And, and, and be sinning in fornication And that's the difference between the biblical term fornication and the biblical term adultery. Yeah. Yes. Now, 
But there, we don't want to take too much time yeah, on this and issue. And there is more to it. I mean, in the eyes of the state for insurance yes. and inheritances and all that, yeah. there and is hear, documentation. And you hear people talk before. about common law marriages. This is basically what you're talking about here. Okay. All right. Hope that helped a little bit, Ms. Sharon. Um, let's see. We got that already. Here's a question. Jonathan from Grand Rapids asks, what do you believe about UFOs? Do, 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 And uh, I think, first of all, we got to explain uh, to, to folks the word UFO. I do believe in UFOs. But when you say that, people, yeah. people, oh, oh yeah. Brother Gunnar believes in he flying believes saucers in and flying green Flying around up there. No, a UFO is simply an unidentified mm -hmm. flying object. You can't not. And that's why they that. still call it that because they're still yeah. unidentified. But let's 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 understand that for most people, when you when you mention UFOs, yes. they're in their mind, they're thinking of something <laughs> from outside of our universe here or our world, uh, something from outer space, something from another planet, or f f angelic activity. They are thinking of aliens. Aliens, okay. Yeah. Um, I, you and I do not believe in that. I wrote a book called The UFOs, Truth or Fable, and I think she has a picture of that she'll put up for you. Yeah. It's on the website. I go into all this. But just briefly, let me say this uh, to uh, Jonathan in Grand Rapids. I do not believe that angels are flying around in UFOs. My joke is this. Do they have a steering wheel or a joystick in that UFO? <laughs> mm -hmm. And, uh, and, mm -hmm. and it, it seems like when I say that, the light comes on. And people, yeah. huh? And and I and I and and they'll say, well, why would they need that? And I'll I'll say, well, why, why do they, do they need, need a mechanism? Why do they need a, a flying saucer? If, yeah. the, it's 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 foolishness. I'm yeah. telling you, UFO. Most of this stuff, if it's real, if it's a flying something or other, motorized, it's military. Military, ninety-five percent of this stuff that people are seeing is near military bases. Yes, it is. And uh, but here's the thing, Dan. It's another distraction. It is another distraction. That's why you wrote your book about the great end time yeah. distraction, because it has become that and the Nephilim all blended together has become one of the greatest it is. distractions. And they're tied together. The, yes. Neph the Nephilim people, yes. most of them believe in the gap theory. And they're spending their time dealing with something that's fictitious and not even real rather than Bible prophecy yep. and encouraging God's people to take advantage of what time we have to okay. be a witness for Christ. Now we're not mad at anybody. If you believe in, no. if you believe in <clears throat> Nephilim, if you believe in fallen angels, yeah. mating with human women, having children, uh, uh, have at it. Uh, we we disagree and we teach uh, and we believe we got the truth here. And we'd like to. We'd, we'd be glad for you to show us the the biblical truth. Well, we got a question in a second here about Genesis six. So you be ready for that um, because somebody asked a really good question that I want us to deal with because I believe it will help some people. Um, so um, thank you, Miss Sharon, for the question on marriage and Jonathan for the UFO question. Um, let's see. Let's just briefly hit on this. Ramona in Minnesota asked the question, should Christians be teaching their children about Santa Claus? Hmm. Well, Santa Claus is uh, another fictitious uh, aspect that's been brought into the Christmas story. The greatest majority of what's in the modern Christmas story, even in our churches, is Catholicism with all kinds of paganism brought in with it, basically today for commercialization of it. Uh, very little of the modern Christmas story is biblical. Aren't we lying to our children when we teach them about the Santa's real? Isn't that yeah. a lie? Well, you know, as you've already said uh, previously, uh, uh, he, he knows who's naughty or nice. He's keeping a, a list, and and we make a list and tell kids to mail it to Santa. Uh, well, we're, pray, praying, we're praying. We're praying to. Uh, There's so many things that are pure paganism about it. Hey, but He's don't replaced. don't lose track of this though. The season is all about redemption. Yeah. So it's a great opportunity to take biblical truth and teach what it's all about. People's hearts are open at Christmas time. Even yeah. some of the hardened people. Yes. You've got an opportunity. And there'll peep, there's people that will come to church for that yes. Christmas cantata. And that's the time That's the time to preach the gospel. That's not the time the whole to bring purpose, Santa out on the stage. The whole purpose for the birth of Christ was to go to Calvary's cross. 
Yeah. That was what it was all about to he begin He said with. that. I came to die. For he this said, cause yes. came I under this yeah, hour. Under this hour. <clears throat> All right, good. Well, thank you, Miss Ramona, uh, for that question. And she had a lot more to that. She, she's with us on this, I could tell from her question. Because um, she, she asked the question, but then she told me a bunch of stuff. So she, she understands. Yeah. Um, I think people are frustrated with all the crazy stuff out there. Well, we've just gone through Halloween. And Halloween's another one of those subjects that's pure paganism. Yeah. And when God's people involve themselves in it in any way, it's giving credence. Explain to, the to them today. what you told me about your son. Your son preached Sunday right before right before Halloween. Yes. He explained. Explain, he was, tell them what he was preaching about in, in the church of Ephesus, and it says, "Thou canst not bear them uh, that uh, are of evil." And yet, when you get to the Laodicean church, look where they are. And he says, it's because, verse 4, he said, because they lost their first love. When you, when you begin to lose your love for Christ, and you begin to become mechanical, and, and you're doing things because they're right, without a heart behind it, it won't be long until you'll forbear yep. those that are evil. And this is what's happened. We began to forbear rather than not for bear. But you also mentioned that they're stretching the other two overlapping. Oh, you're talking about, yes. The Thanksgiving thing. Thanksgiving is much more biblical than any of the three, Halloween or Christmas. Yet Halloween has overshadowed Thanksgiving. Christmas has overtaken. And the reality is Thanksgiving is what we ought to be involved in, thanking the Lord uh, for what he's done. The devil is a master, not of throwing away truth, but of convoluting it and covering it okay. over. All right. Real quickly, Doc, and I'll, have my, I'll ask her to put up, the, she's got it ready there, the Christmas thing. Your, yeah. your, your Christmas CDs. And I think, yes. Is there a DVD? I have a, uh, it's a four-part DVD and a three-CD set Okay, called The Truths of the Christmas. I want you to take just a second, Doc. She's going to put up your Gap Theory DVD or CD, whatever that is. DVD, DVDs. Two, two DVD sets. Awesome stuff. Um, somebody has asked, and, uh, and I'm looking for it here. Oh, Michelle in Memphis has asked uh, wh why we don't believe in the Gap Theory. Just take just 30 okay. seconds for a well, minute. One reason we don't believe in it because it don't exist. Yeah. Uh, because the gap theory is supposedly a gap of time between verse 1 and 2 of Genesis chapter number 1. Grammatically from the Hebrew, verse number 2 is an explanation of God's working uh, uh, in verse number 1. Uh, it is a continuation. There is no gap of time. And uh, if there was a pre-Adamic world in that period of time, which they want to insert in there, uh, that means sin was introduced before Adam was made. And our Bible is clear that sin is a result, we're all sinners because of Grandpa Adam. Uh, there are many other ways, but there is no gap of time grammatically, nor is there scientifically a gap of time, because verse number 2 explains the condition of the elements that God brought into existence in verse number 1, water. So Romans 5.12, yes. as by one man sin entered into the world. That's yes is a contradiction of the gap. There would theory. be a contradiction. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what do the gap theory people? How do they how do they con how do they deal with that? I don't know, that? we'd have to ask them. Because as by as by one man God sitting outside of time. So yes. you can't you can't say well well this is talking about now that's talking about then. No, God no. is sitting outside of time as by one man sin entered into the world. World. Yes. And, and the, they try to tell us well that's this world because this world is a recreation of the original. God said very plainly, in six days I made the heavens and the earth. Verse number one is the heaven, because on, on day number two, God makes an expanse and divides the heaven. And from that point on, you'll find the word heavens. But verse number one of your Bible is a heaven. Uh, and there is, there is no remaking of anything because nothing existed. The word for created in verse number one is the word Hebrew word bara. It means to bring into existence something that never existed before. So let's real quickly explain something else when it says, when he tells Adam to, re, to uh, 
um, replenish. replenish. Well, they need to get them a. They need to go back and get them an original Webster's dictionary yeah. and understand when your when your King James Bible was translated, replenish would mean what you would call today to fill it up. To fill it up. That's exactly right. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff, Doc. And uh, folks, get that get that uh, that DVD set that he has on there. That's good stuff. It'll help you. By the way, what this is important. The, the gap there. If, if you're wrong in Genesis back there, it's going to affect things you believe later on. I've always said that if you are off. In, in the first book, and if you're off in the first chapter, and if you're off in the first verse, you're going to be off at different places, yeah. and you're going to end up at the wrong place. Yeah, because the whole Nephilim thing stands on, upon the belief in a gap. All of it. I'm not saying on everybody the that's a Nephilim no. person believes that, but no. they need that. It ha they need that. That's to, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. and uh, it's it's just not there. And, and they try to prove it. By some outside materials, or they don't even realize that the gap theory in our modern setting began in the same era of time that the translation of our Bible came about because they were trying to, uh, as well as this is the same time that modern evolution was coming about. Yeah. So they were trying to find ways to deal with all of this. And, I, and you hit it right on the nail there um, the dinosaur thing. Oh, Christians yeah. didn't know what to do with it. No, that's it. So they, they didn't know what so to do with it. So they bought into the gap. They bought into it. Not really. Realizing that there were dinosaurs. In our museum, in our research laboratories, uh, we're finding soft cell tissue in our dinosaur bones. That means they could be less, they cannot be any more than six, 6,800 years old. Yeah. Period. If you say so, that's all, that's over my head, Doc. <laughs> that's why I don't work at the Creation Museum. <laughs> that's over my head. Well, this one here is not over my head. Let's, uh, Mike from Georgia. No, uh, we'll get to him in a second. Julie from Florida. Didn't the scripture say that God destroyed the world with a flood because of the DNA of the Nephilim? No, my Bible is very clear in Genesis chapter 6. It was because of the wickedness of man. Okay, so let's read that. Well, he says in verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man wait was minute, great. Wait a minute, It's the wickedness of the Nephilim, isn't it? No, it's the wickedness of man. That's exactly right. Yeah. I don't understand why and, people and are confused. And, his ima he, and every imagination of his thoughts and his heart was only evil continually. Because of the Nephilim, it says, right? No, because of man's thoughts. Yeah. How, see what they've done, dog. They are taking away the accountability of man yes. for yes. our sin and blaming it on angels who fell. And so that's why they go over to to the Olivet Discourse in Matthew 24, and Jesus, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming. So they'll go back and say, well, it happened there, so it's going to happen again. It didn't happen there, so it's not going to happen again. Yeah, the days of Noah, he, well, he explains. He says he explains uh, they it. were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. And then Luke gives the same record, only Luke talks about, and so also, as it was in the days of Lot. Yeah. Yeah. He's talking about talking two, about two, sin. He's talking about how two men can live that are righteous because the Bible says Lot's righteous. Yeah. This is telling Jesus is saying as judgment's about to come, you can live one of two ways. You can live like Noah did on the outside trying to reach the world or you can compromise and go on the inside like Lot and lose it all. But he's still a righteous man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Jesus was bringing it out. So the purpose of the flood has nothing to do with, in fact, angels are not mentioned in Genesis no. 6. Not at all. Not anywhere. The context of Genesis 6, like you say so often, yeah. is chapter 4 and chapter 5. That's it. That's, that's how you get Men an understanding. Multiplying. That's, that's it. Chapter 4 and 5 is an insertion. I, I have a booklet on it, on as the days of Noah and Lot, because this is why people misunderstand yeah. it. Yes. And chapter 6, here's the context. Uh, after you read chapter 4 and 5, you, it says in verse 1 of chapter 6, and, and it came to pass when men, men began to multiply. You, you might ought to circle that in your Bible, yeah. folks. Men began to Didn't say angels and women. But see, they want to run to the word sons of God, but they don't want to let their Bible be the dictionary to, uh, to describe yep. what the sons of God That's mean. That's right. And, and in the book, The Great End Time Distraction, I have a chapter in there called where I deal with all 11 times the phrase sons of God yes. is mentioned. Mm -hmm. And this is the first one, by the way, Genesis 6, 2, mm -hmm. that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. Who are the sons of God and the daughters of men? The yeah. people he just talked about in verse 1. Yep. Men multiplying. Yeah. 
and uh, that they were fair. In fact, it says there were giants in the land after yes. this fact. That's because Moses is pinning this in the first 18 months of their wilderness journey. At the same time, the, the witnesses had just come back out spying the land and say, hey, there's giants in the yeah. land. That's, yeah. It's not that difficult to see. And so it says here, they were uh, saw that the, the the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, took them wives upon all they chose. We haven't read anything about an angel no, yet. No. Uh, verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall always strive with man, but that he also is flesh, his days shall be... By the way, God's talking about man. He's yep. not angels, not fallen all angels. All the way through. Not a sin of an angel with a woman. No, all the way through. Um, uh, his days should be 120 years. We believe yeah. that's uh, reference to the 6,000 years, yes. possibly. Verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days, he says. And okay. also and that. also after, yeah. when the sons of God went into the daughters of men. So the giants are already there yeah. before this union of the sons of God and the daughters of men. A, a simple study of the Bible will, will solve all these problems. Yeah, but Dr. So-and-so said... <laughs> Yeah, get or, ready. Or Enoch reading wrote in the book, we yeah. think Enoch wrote. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, we've been told he did. The Bible says that children were born to them, not giants, not, not yep. Nephilim. Children were born unto them. Yep. All right, and then what well, you just read in verse 5 God looked down, saw the wickedness yep. of man. man. Yes. What's so hard about this? And then he explains it's the imaginations of the heart, wicked, only evil, continually. Yeah. It's me, it's me, it's me. Oh and Lord. that's where we are today. We've come full circle. This is our world yeah. today. And uh, yeah. it's, it's man's sin that causes God's judgment upon yes. a nation and upon yes. a people. And that's what we need today, Doc, in the couple of minutes we got left. Yeah, we've got about two minutes left or less. I think we've got one minute left. God is looking for repentance. God wants America to repent. God wants people to be saved, but not yes. only that, He wants saved people to repent of their sins. Second Chronicles, live right. chapter 7, verse 14, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves Amen. and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, my people yeah. turn from their wicked ways. Yeah. And uh, then will I heal their land and forgive oh their sin. That's what we need. Well, Doc, we're out of time. And folks, uh, thanks for watching. Thank you for all the questions, folks. Uh, Michelle and Jonathan here. And, and others uh, that we didn't get to. There was a couple others we didn't get to. Maybe but. down the road we'll do this again yeah. in a few weeks. Uh, we hope uh, we've been a help to you. I hope you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. He's coming back, and He's coming back soon. And uh, can't wait. Um, go to the website, ProxenSpotlight.com. You can get the books there. Go to our bookstores. The YouTube channel is there. Alrighty, see you next time. Until then, keep your eyes on them skies.